Good song. Thank you. Amen.
God wants for his creation to make a choice. To make a choice. There's something about uh, the human being that God created that is uh, very powerful but very wonderful. Very powerful but very wonderful as well. That being the will. The will of mankind. The will and affection of the heart of mankind. Now, I don't know how I would have fared in the old system of uh, some nationalities and civilizations to where the parents fixed marriages. I don't know about that one. They did it on uh, the basis of culture and a lot of different things. That, I suppose it worked well for their day and age. I suppose it worked good. I don't know. I'm glad I don't know. Because it left me with the choice. Amen. And uh, you might think to yourself, boy, that, that choice though sometimes is rough. I know. <coughs> if you've done 54 years, you know that sometimes the choice brought about some tough days. But that's all right. When you make the choice and you determine and decide to, to stay with that choice, then there's great trauma and trials, but there's great blessings and great joy as well. And uh, there's something about that. Uh, I chose her, she chose me. There's something about the quality of that love in that choice that is very special. Very special. And so, in the mix of spiritual and the things of the Lord, God made it so that the human being would be subject to choice and will. And uh, that doesn't speak for all those who died before their age, at the age of accountability. But the Lord made a choice in that matter. The Lord made a choice. One author brought up in our Sunday school lesson this, that 70, about 70% of all human beings who have ever been born into this world die before the age of accountability. And uh, with our faith in prevenient grace, that what that means is that 70% of all created human beings, uh, all born human beings, uh, are set. Well, as I look at you, you're not in that number. Because you're still here thinking and choosing. So we're left then with the responsibility to make a choice about God, about faith, about righteousness about the Spirit, about heaven, about hell, about winning hearts, or not. And we have that responsibility. we got to deal with that. So Lord, help us to understand. Jesus became the human, key human agent. You and I must become key <coughs> human agents in the plan of God. Now, one author said this about Jesus. He said, Jesus did all that he did with the same plan that he gave us. What do you mean by that? Well, when Jesus came, he was anointed by the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, and went out and did everything he did for the Holy Spirit. Now, our doctrine that we believe, that we preach, that we teach, says that we can be filled with the Spirit, possessed by the Spirit, <coughs> the same Spirit that possessed Christ. You want to be a key human agent in the plan of God? Then be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Start to understand the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Christianity is a life that must be imparted. Christianity is a life that must be imparted. 
before it can be lived. <coughs> now, salvation is not going to just happen accidentally. It isn't. If it was going to happen accidentally, there would be no need for missionaries. No need for missionaries. No need for someone to tell the story. No need for someone to lay hands on and pray. No need to ask for God to intervene and to come and do the things He did. be no need for prayer. There'd be no need for preaching. No need for teaching. No need for testifying. No need for witnessing and passing out literature and challenging people to come to church and pray. There'd be no need for it. But as it is, the Lord said to His disciples over and over and over and over and over and over again, Go and teach and preach and heal and give this message to all peoples all over the world. Go. You take that message. So evidently, the Lord wanted for people of the faith who believed in Him to become like Him key human agent. Key human agents. We often think of ourselves as just kind of members of faith. You never really look at yourself as a key human agent. Where would salvation be without a Christ? <coughs> you say, well, there'd be no salvation. That's true. There'd be no salvation. There'd be no upper room. There'd be no my spirit I give unto you. Wouldn't be that way. So he came. He did what he did. Now, he left us with the responsibility to pick up on this particular law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus and become key human agents. The church is the body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. I've often wondered this about the ministry of Jesus. You know, there's all these people wandering around in uh, Judea all these different countries where he was. But they didn't just all just kind of fall down and fall over themselves to get saved. It looked like the ones that really got help were the ones where Jesus went. Wherever Jesus was, that's who got help. And then he sent his disciples out with help and power, and those were the ones who got help. And then he says, now, I'm going away, I'm going to send my spirit, I want you to carry this message and heal people. But he said, wait, wait, wait in Jerusalem until you are filled with power. Until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power. Until the Holy Ghost comes and gives you what I can do. He says, wait. Go and wait for the power. <coughs> so they did that. The church is the body of Christ and the Holy Ghost is His Spirit. No soul enters the kingdom of God born alone of the Spirit. There is a human agent as well as a divine Spirit. A human agent as well as a divine Spirit. Therefore, if you and I were to take it upon ourselves to become key human agent, full of His Spirit, we would be where we need to be at the time we need to be for who we need to be for. Not everybody. But then, I don't have to be everybody. Because there's an Amy. There's an Amy D. So I don't have to be an everybody. There's a Paul Taylor. There's a Joe. There's a friend. There's a forest. He's been all over the world. I don't have to go. I don't have to be in a lot of places. Yeah. Why? Because there's a bill. There's a cliff. On and on it goes. When we make a choice to become the human agent for God's use, then we have to wait for the power. Amen. You say, well, people can get saved just under the power of the Holy Spirit. That's true. So if that was something by itself, why would missionaries have to do it? Why would we need to do missionary work? Why would we need to 
invite people to church? Why would we need to challenge people to go to camp meeting? Evidently, in the plan of God, in the plan of God, this life, this law of the Spirit, this gospel message, this being born into the kingdom is something that is carried by the human agent and imparted as the Holy Spirit will accomplish His work. Amen. Why do churches die? Well, churches die for this reason. Churches die for this reason. Declining spiritual birth rate. Declining spiritual birth rate. That's why churches die. Populations will die with the declining birth rates. Tribes will die out when no more new people are being born. When there's no new little types like this one that Dave brought up here, when there's no more new little ones like that, a people will get old and die off, and it's over. That's not hard to understand. We understand that. But the faith is the same way. The human agent must be full of the divine spirit in order for new life to be brought forth, new life to be brought forth is only going to happen when an individual realizes that they are a key human agent in the plan, in the scheme. Only then will the Holy Spirit be able to accomplish His work. The law of the Holy Spirit, this is one of the aspects of that law of the Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus that makes people free is that he's going to work through and in the human agent. It isn't going to happen accidentally and by itself. If it was going to happen accidentally and by itself, we could just sit at home and eat, drink, and be merry because the Holy Spirit will go and do it. That's not how this thing's going to work. This is going to work. The kingdom is going to expand. The church is going to have life and bring forth life. The saints are not going to be barren. When individuals realize being a key human agent. <clears throat> a key human agent is this. This is one that has God's spirit who is in the right place at the right time for that particular individual. That particular individual. Well, we're all here in Frenchtown, so that means we're not in Missoula. We're all here in Montana, so that means none of us are in Nevada or California, or Iowa, or Minnesota, we're all right here. Therefore, if someone's in need in Minnesota, none of us are going to be worth uh, much, except for if we know about them and pray for them. We're not there to help them. Who is there to help them? Who do you know in Minneapolis, Minnesota, that preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ and being filled with the Holy Ghost? Who do you know in Minneapolis, Minnesota that does that? I don't know anybody in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I don't know if I know anybody at all in the whole state of Minnesota that preaches being born again and being filled with the Holy Spirit and going out and helping people find Jesus Christ. I might know somebody in Minnesota and don't know that they're there. But I can't pull them off the top of my head here. Who's over there? Lord helps us to understand this matter of being a key human agent. In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4, I like this. I lean on this often. 1 John 4 and 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is the Holy Spirit that is given to you, the child of God, than whatever power it is that's out here causing trouble and problems. Whatever is against God, greater is he that is in you. The Holy Spirit in you is greater than all of that. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus must become the law in you 
so that you can become that human agent, that key human agent, right where you are at that particular time, praying for that individual, those individuals. It might be a prayer for healing. It might be a prayer for healing. You know, uh, my wife's sister's not doing well today. They say, well, why doesn't God touch her? You know, in the beginning when she got that first liver transplant, she was given a 20-year life expectancy. 20-year life expectancy. She had to have another liver transplant and a kidney transplant. And in it all, she's almost at 30 years. She's almost at 30 years of the life that she got. Yeah. I don't know who prayed the prayer that helped her to get all these extra years. I don't know. Maybe it was one of you. Maybe it was one of you. You know, my mom has about three terminal illnesses. About three, I think that's what she told me. She has three terminal illnesses. You know something about mom? She's 80 years old. <laughs> she had some of these illnesses 50 years ago. 40 and 50 years ago she had some of these. She's 80 years old. I don't know who the key agent was who prayed for her. Somebody was a key human agent with the Holy Spirit working. Amen. Numerous people are saved and still plodding along. I saw a picture of John Bush the other day. John Bush is 70 years old. He's still plodding along. Praising the Lord and doing the best he can to worship and teach and lead others and pray. The key human agent in his life died in a car wreck but made an impression and a contact and got a hold of John's heart before he died. And that happened back in, oh my word, 73, 74. John's here 42 years later. Key human agent, full of the Spirit. Full of the Spirit. <coughs> Amen. The law of the Spirit of God in Christ Jesus. So what that means is the law working in the human form of Christ, the Holy Spirit working in Him, doing His ministry and His work, is what you and I must become. That same law at work in us, the human agent, right where we're at, right where we're supposed to be, doing what we should be doing, and for whoever it is. Amen. I might be here for you. I might not be here for you. But somebody is here for you. It's important that you are there, full of God's Spirit, and taking heart in this matter of this human uh, agency. The kingdom is so limited. The kingdom is so limited because People somehow lump this whole business of Christianity all in a lump. They want to make it all the same and everybody the same. No, that's not how this thing works. You figure that out after a while. Well, I can't preach like him. I can't teach like him. I can't. You know, you can't. You can only be what you are. You can only be what you are. But full of the Holy Spirit, the kingdom then is not limited to just the preachers. The kingdom is not limited to just the evangelists. Amen. Us preachers and evangelists, we come along and we come down the line and harp on a lot of stuff and people get the idea, well, that's what's most important. <coughs> get a perception. The perception being everybody has to be like this. When God is looking for individuals who've made a choice. When God is looking for individuals who waited in the upper room and the Holy Ghost came and filled them and then they went out and did what they could do. 
in the way that they could do it. Not like I do it, but like you do. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Thank the Lord for missionaries. Thank the Lord for people who realize this matter of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus filling them and then going and becoming key human agent for many or for someone. Or for someone. Amen. You don't worry about who you've been able to get into the gates. You will never know all of the individuals that you were there for at the critical time. They needed someone. You will never know all of them. You may know a few who will tell you, because you were there, I am here. There may be some that will tell you that. Because of you, I'm here today. But for most of them, you will never know. You will never know that it was you that was there and you were full of the Spirit and you helped them to find God, find help, find healing, find solace and comfort and guidance and leadership and answers. It was you. Amen. I, you know, we may not have all the answers as to why God limited himself to the human agent, but he did, and so we might as well embrace that and start realizing ourselves to become key human agent. How about down on the seashore there? Remember? Thousands of people on the seashore, and they're all hungry, and they've been listening to the message, you know, and they're hungry, and says, oh, we got all these hungry people, no food. How much food we got? Well, there's a, a few pieces of bread and some fish. So oh, great. We've got five to 10,000 people here. What are we going to do? Jesus says, what do we got here? Someone says, well, here's a little guy here. He's got a little bit of a lunch. He says, bring him to me. Bring him to me. Little guy comes walking <laughs> over, carrying his little lunch basket. There you go, Jesus. It's yours. Do what you want. Lord took it from there. The little guy was a hero that day. Didn't even know it. Begin to realize that, I suppose. The little guy was a hero. The little guy was a key human agent. I suppose the Lord could have spoke loaves and fishes out of nothing. He could do that, but he didn't choose to do that. He chose a human agent to be key at a critical moment. The little guy came. Did what he had to do. How about Gideon? Remember the story of Gideon? He's just kind of tending his business, doing what he always did, and the Lord comes to him and says, uh, I got a job for you. I want you to say, Oh, wait a minute. No, no, that's not me. I don't do things like that. He says, Nope, you don't want me to Follow me. I'll show you what to do. I'll show you what to do. Key human agent. Amen. What about the Apostle Paul? Breathing, threatening, and slaughter. Walking along down the road there. Arr, arr, arr. And Christ came. Revealed himself to him. Smote him. Struck him down. And then he let him uh, wander in blindness there for a little while. Then he started to talk to him. He started to talk to him. He said, Paul, I got to talk to you. I got something special that I want you to do, that I want you to be. And Paul, he's thinking, yeah, great. What am I supposed to do? I'm blind. Can't see a thing. How special is that? But the Lord had a key human agent over in town. And he says, I got someone over here who's going to come see you. He's going to help you get your eyes like that. And then I want you to go do what I'm sending you out to do. Oh, sure, the Lord could have just went, poof! Eyesight, all good. But he did. Key human agent, he brought him in, and that guy was shaking. He said, oh, wait, no! That's, that's Saul! Don't you know who that is? That's Saul! Man, he's killing me. He's killing Christians. 
What are you getting me into? But he's God's man. He says, okay. I trust you. I'll go. And away he went. Prayed that prayer. And the rest of the world knows the whole world was affected by the Apostle Paul and his ministry <coughs> into Europe. Key human agent. Amen. You know, lots of stories like that. Even modern day stories like that. When we start to understand some of the, the power of these scriptures, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I have to lean on that a lot, all the time. I have to lean on that all the time, all the time, literally all the time. I have to lean on that. Pull it up. Here it is, Lord. I'm at a loss now, but what now? Over and over and over again, they'll come. Amen. They'll come. Well, do you understand this law of life in Christ Jesus a little better, how it's supposed to work? God has to have you, the individual. God has to have you full of His Spirit in order to do what He wants to do. You can't just, you can't just kind of come and be a believer and then go away and do what God wants you to do. You're going to have to come and submit yourself to Him and be a believer, be a follower. But you must, you must, you must wait and get the power that He promised. You must have the Holy Spirit at work in you. It's a law of this life in Christ Jesus. If you're going to get in, if you're going to accomplish what the Lord wants to accomplish, you must have the Holy Spirit. You can't be born again and be a new creature without the Holy Ghost working in you. This is not just a religious club. This is not just a... This is not just a religious organization. If we don't have any supernatural in our faith, then that's all we are. It's just a religious club. If we don't have any supernatural in our prayer, if we don't have any supernatural in our faith, if we don't have any supernatural in our heart that breathes the message of Christ Jesus, we're only a religious club. Religious organization. Anybody can do that. We'll have parties and meals and uh, go to events and go protest stuff, carry placards and protest stuff. That's all we are. If we don't have supernatural in our heart and in our faith at work in us and through us to where we become key human agents in the plan of God, then that's all we are is a religious club, another one. Don't let church, don't let religion, don't let the faith just become some kind of a practice. Ask for the Lord to make it supernatural to you, in you, through you, for you. And then for those out here who need that help. For those out here that need that message. For those that need that power to become more and better than what they are. If we don't understand this, folks, we're going to have declining, declining numbers in the faith. That's why our country's in the shape it's in. Declining numbers of people full of the Holy Spirit. It's not a lack of churches. It's not a lack of religious organizations. We've got plenty of those. Travel across the United States and check out some of the big mega churches and organizations out there. Lots. It's not for lack of religion. It's for lack of the living Holy Spirit in the heart. That's how come we got those crazy issues up in our society that are going on today. People think it's normal. We've got big problems. But our problems begin at the individual level when people just let religion just be uh, just kind of a, you know, a church type organization. No supernatural existence of His Spirit in the heart. Amen. Lord help us. So then we have to answer this question. Bring it down to a little more personal matter. Am I, am I a key human agent? Am I a key human agent? 
Amen. You know, in the faith, it's easy to get lost in your day-to-day -day issues. Get lost in your week-to-week -week problems. Get lost in your month-to-month -month difficulties and the issues of life. And uh, just kind of full coast along, you know, it's like riding the river on a raft. You, where the current takes you is where you go. But this is going to take something more. You're going to have to dig in here and ask the Lord to come. Refresh. Refresh in you the love of God, the power of God, the purpose of God, the plan of God. Amen. So that you can return to that status of a key human agent. When the Lord needs someone for this, it just happens to be, you happen to be there. Just so accidental sometimes it looks like that. You just happen to be there and someone has a need that you have a story to share with them. A bit of wisdom, a bit of advice, comfort, love, care. Scripture, an experience, and it's you that's right there for that individual. We all, we all will become key human agents in the plan of God if we start to understand the law here. Amen. God can help us, folks. And it won't be the exact same for all of us. I can't do what Paul does. I can't do what Aaron does. I can't do what Clinton does or Forrest. Frank or Bill or Lee. I can't do what any of our men do. Joe, Josh, I can't do. I can't do what they do. But I can do what I can do. And if I can just aid the Lord, give me your spirit to do what I can do. I'll do that. Give me your spirit, Lord, to be what I can be. I'll be that. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let's bow out of Father in heaven, in Jesus' name. Thank you for this time together in the faith and the word, the thinking of Christ, Jesus, the Son, the plan, and the message. Holy Spirit, waiting on him, being filled with him, becoming Lord, that key individual in your plan and purpose. But we need you, Lord. We need you. We invite you. Come, join us. Sit with us. Ride with us. Sup with us. Talk with us. Counsel with us. Think with us. Pray with us. Lord, your presence we invite today. Thank you for our friends and visitors who come to be with us today. Bless them in their uh, work and assignments, Lord, uh, where they go, what they do. And all of our regulars here, we appreciate and love each one. Bless them as well. And then, Lord, there are some not here today. Reach out there and bless them and strengthen them and encourage them today. So in all things we give thanks. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you.